Good morning. And welcome to worship this morning here at St. John Lutheran Church. A special welcome to all of you joining us online and from at home. It's a pleasure to have you with us here today. So inside your, this is your worship bulletin, and I wanted to, to highlight a couple of announcements. First thing I wanted to do is remind you about our prayer cards. So these yellow prayer cards are in the pews in front of you. If you have someone that you'd like us to pray for as part of our service today, please go ahead and fill this out now. You can hand it to the ushers during the singing of this first hymn, and they'll bring this up to us so we can pray for your loved one as part of our service today. Now, inside your worship bulletin, you should find a Connect card. Uh, please take a moment, fill it out. You, there's contact information on the front, next steps of faith on the back. This is a great way for you to connect with us and for us to connect with you. So if there's ever a little note you want to tell us or something you want us to know about, simply write it on here, drop it into the offering plate, and it'll get to us. A great way for you to connect with us. And you know what, speaking of good ways to connect, I wanted to highlight our Facebook page. So we have a very active St. John Lutheran Facebook page. And if you would please, those of you on Facebook, if you would please you know, interact with it, uh, comment on it, share it, like it, those kind of things, that helps get the word out about our church and spread it beyond our, our own community out into the larger community of Bernie. So please do uh, do that. Now, coming up in June, we have a mission trip for our youth group. And the mission trip is not till June, but the deadline is tomorrow. And so if you've been thinking about that and considering it, well, tomorrow is a deadline, so please do let us know one way or the other. You see these beautiful flowers on either side of me here? Well, you have the opportunity to give them uh, yourself one week. And there's a sign-up out there in the lobby behind our information desk with all of the dates in the year. You're welcome to choose a date that works for you, give it an honor of or a memory of or in recognition of somebody. But it's a way to, to beautify our worship space. Uh, and then now last week, we were talking in our worship series about connecting. And I challenged everybody to connect with one group, just connect with one group this year. Uh, and this year, we move from connect to serve, to serving monthly. And the challenge is to serve, to serve at least one time a month this year, uh, here in our church or here through our church. And there's an opportunity to do that. Right across the way there in the Family Life Center, we have some tables set up uh, with the committees and the various ways that you can get plugged into committees and serve here in the church and then through our church in the larger community. So I'd encourage you to go and check those out. So lots of good things are happening here at our church, and we're thrilled that you've joined us here today. Uh, we've come to worship the Lord, and so let us pray. Lord God Almighty, we thank you and we praise you for this day which you have given to us. Lord, thank you. Thank you for the chance to gather in this place. Thank you for the chance to worship you. Lord Jesus, bless us, we pray. Bless us with a sense of your presence, of, of your power, that we can hear your word and respond with praise and with obedience. For we ask this, Jesus, in your name. Amen. And our service begins with a brief order of confession and forgiveness, which is found on the screen above us. If you would please stand as you are willing and able. And we begin this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Lord, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, then we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, I invite you in these moments of silence to name and to confess your sin before the Lord. And together we say, most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. 
We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your way to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And here again the good news. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all of your sin. As a called and ordained minister in the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all of your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share with one another a greeting of peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Our prayer of the day is found printed on the screen above us. We pray it together. Let us pray. Lord God, you call us to the vine in the vineyard and leave no one standing idle. Set us to our tasks in the work of your kingdom and help us to order our lives by your wisdom. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And please remain standing for the singing of the Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink you will drink and with the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten disciples heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as the rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them but it is not so among you. 
but whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God the Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So for the past few Sundays, we have been looking at our discipleship uh, model. Oops. It is, yes. uh, so first we talk about the, the first circle of the Lord, about worshiping weekly with the challenge to resolve to worship one time more this year. Then the next week was walk daily with the Lord. And the challenge was of giving thanks to God for one thing every day in our daily time with him. Last week, we moved to the circle, uh, the second circle of your neighbor. And we heard about connecting consistently with the goal of getting connected to at least one group here at the church. And today we'll look at the last step in the process of becoming a disciple, and that step is serving. And the challenge to you is to serve monthly, one time per month at church or through the church. You know, the Bible speaks of servanthood a lot, you know, so we're going to take a quick look at a biblical picture of a servant. Jesus called himself a servant. He says in today's gospel, for the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. So Jesus saw his life in terms of service and sacrifice. He washed his disciples' feet as an act of service. He reached out to those who were very low on the social scale, lepers, tax collectors, women and children. He fed the hungry, he cured the sick, and he said that to honor him was to serve those who were in need. He says in the gospel, truly I tell you just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. So Jesus is an example of servanthood. And He called his disciples to follow him, not only to do the mission work, but also to serve others. And he taught his disciples that greatness was measured in terms of service. We heard in today's gospel him saying, whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. You know, this teaching about greatness through service is so contrary to the world's idea of greatness. We know that the world defines greatness in terms of power, prestige, possessions, position, and Jesus taught greatness through being a servant. And even the 12 disciples had a hard time understanding his concept of servanthood. It was difficult for them to separate themselves from the popular model of power and dominance. The 12 had been walking with the Lord for three years. They heard him preach and teach. I'm sure they had many private conversations with Jesus. You would think that the 12, more than anyone else, would have been prepared for service. But the Gospel of Mark mentions at least two instances when the disciples discussed among themselves their personal greatness and their own gain and ask for privileged positions for themselves. The first one is in Mark 9. Both of them are always in the context of Jesus speaking about his suffering and death. So in the first one is in Mark 9. Jesus just spoke to the disciples of, about the necessity of his own suffering and death on the cross. But in response, the disciples dreamed of being great and playing some kind of a role in the kingdom established by Jesus the Messiah. So in chapter 9, Mark writes, when they came to Capernaum, 
And when they were in the house, Jesus asked his disciples, what were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. So the disciples' personal ambitions were attached to earthly prestige and power, and they turned a deaf ear to Jesus' teachings on servanthood and suffering. But in response to their musings about greatness, Jesus told them this well-known reversal, the first shall be last. And Mark writes, Jesus sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, whoever wants to be first must be last and servant of all. So again, here he emphasized the importance of humble service. And then we have the text in Mark 10, which is what we just heard this morning, when Jesus again repeated the announcement of his suffering and death in Jerusalem, but this time it was met with a request expressed by James and John, the sons of Zebedee, the two out of the three closest disciples of Jesus. And they asked Jesus to grant them the seats of power. They said, grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. It's interesting how Jesus answered them. He said, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? When James and John did. Now we know the whole story. We know Good Friday. And because we know the story, we can see the supreme irony that Mark uses here to show the brothers' request. They were actually not asking for ranks of power, but for a place in the shadow of the cross. And at the crucifixion, two criminals assumed the positions that James and John had requested. One was crucified at Christ's right hand and the other at his left. So clearly the sons of Zebedee did not understand what they were asking for. But again, Jesus used this incident to teach his disciples another lesson on servanthood. And this time he used a secular mod model, the ideal of power in his day, which was the Roman government. The Roman government ruled through tyranny and dominance, and so he said, you know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as the rulers, they lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But then he placed a totally different picture before them. He said, it is not so among you, but whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. So here Jesus repeated that greatness comes from service. And even the rulers must become servants. And Jesus himself was the ultimate example of greatness through servanthood. For the Son of Man came not to be served but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Jesus saw his life in terms of service and self-sacrifice. Now Christ's model was counter-cultural counter in his day, and it is counter-cultural today. It is contrary to the world's definition of greatness and power. But it is Jesus' call to his disciples to follow him and to do the same, to serve. So following Jesus means serving like Jesus. And serving is a visible mark of discipleship. You know, when we worship God, we praise him, praise his name. When we walk with him daily, we acknowledge him as the Lord of our lives. When we connect with other believers, we love our neighbor, we show and receive support and uh, encouragement. When we, when we serve, we put the love of God and the love of neighbor into action. So serving is an important step of faith. Serving, 
actually marks growth in faith, moving from being a passive worshiper to an active servant. Second chapter of James speaks of how serving helps our faith come alive. How serving means putting faith into action, otherwise we have dead faith. Serving begins with the right mindset. Paul reminds us in Philippians chapter two, he says, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. So servants' identity is based in Christ. Servants don't look for recognition or earning a reward or proving their self-worth. But rather, servants look at service as an opportunity, opportunity to serve God and to meet the needs of others. A few years ago, uh, we took uh, the reveal uh, survey here, which is a survey that in 2000 congregations participated in at churches and um, they found that serving is by far the most influential personal spiritual practice. Serving those in need through the church is the number one catalyst for spiritual growth, but then right second was serving the church or serving in the church. So we have two activities, serving those in need through the church and serving the church, two practices that contribute the spiritual growth of a believer. So of course serving is a component of the discipleship model that we have here at St. John, and the challenge to you is to serve monthly. Uh, there are opportunities at St. John to serve either through the church or to serve the church, and I divided those two sort of I'm not able to, of course, list all of them in my little collage that Tracy made. We could only put four pictures, so. but there are many other opportunities. Growing Hope is one of them. We partner with Hill Country Daily Bread for uh, food distribution here in our parking lot every other Wednesday. Even more importantly, uh, part of this is one-on-one -on -one mentoring with families in our community. Other community outreach is always around Thanksgiving when our men go to the fairgrounds and they cook turkeys with other men from Bernie to be distributed through uh, Hill Country Family Services. Operation Christmas Child is a big one here. We just finished it. It's collecting shoe boxes. We not only collect in our congregation, but we are now the collection center for the whole Hill Country region. Uh, the next one is actually has to do with um, disaster relief, both of them. One is the famous buckets that we collected to be sent to NALC Disaster Relief Center where they are filled with uh, cleaning supplies and then distributed to people who are trying to do cleanup after floods or hurricanes. And the other is actually members of our church actively involved in some cleanup and rebuilding after major uh, hurricanes. So this is our disaster relief team. But we have quilters who quilt, and the quilts are sent all over the world. Even our grief support is an uh, outreach to the community because it goes beyond the walls of the church. So there are many opportunities to serve our community and the wider world through our church. But then there's also opportunities to serve the church and serve here at St. John. And uh, I had a picture of this um, board right there in the um, gathering place where you'll find these. These are uh, cards that you can pick up one. It describes different ministries, how you can serve. I'll uh, give you a little description so we have, um, you know, we have possibilities for service, um, for example, sponsoring a new member, 
serving Sunday breakfast, emergency response team always looking for members, ushers, communion assistants, altar guild. Um, those of you who have musical talents, TJ always looking for more choir members. Uh, if you want to be a soloist or do an instrumental piece, um, always welcome. Uh, you can be an assisting minister. We have now six or seven who uh, do it faithfully. So there are many opportunities today. Perhaps some of you have gone to breakfast and saw that we had a ministry fair where our committees were displaying the opportunities for service. Um, our council representatives were there to show you and tell you about the different opportunities. I think it's not, no longer happening after the 11 o'clock, right? So this was the opportunity this morning. But anyway, we encourage and challenge you to serve here, whether it's monthly or whether it's just once a year. But serving will help you to feel connected to the church. But most of all, serving will help you to grow spiritually to grow in your faith. Our Lord Jesus Christ gave us an example of servanthood. He was a humble servant, and he calls us to follow him in paths of servanthood. Amen. And at this time, our service continues with our confession of faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. If you would please stand as you are willing and able. Living together in trust and in hope, we confess our Christian faith. And together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, let us serve others out of the overflow of love and obedience that we have for Jesus. Let us serve with joy and excellence, knowing that we are advancing the kingdom of God. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we thank you for this church and all who serve here, the ushers, the altar guild, the tech team, the musicians and communion servers, the greeters and teachers, those who work in the nursery and the kitchen, all who serve in various ways. And we especially thank you for our beloved servant pastors, Pastor Waters and Pastor Berquist. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of the nations, we pray for those who serve as leaders in our nation, state, and city. We ask that they will follow your will as they lead. We pray especially for our President Joe Biden and the Russian President Vladimir Putin. Lord, lead them away from war and into peace. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we pray for our one, that one person in our life who doesn't know you, or who did know you and walked away, work in their lives to save them and work in our hearts to give us hope. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you command your church to reach out and tell people the good news of what you have done. We pray for the missionaries that we support in Japan and Honduras and South Asia. We pray for the Houston Oromo Church. We pray for the churches in South Sudan and in Ethiopia as they face war and violence. Protect your people, Lord, and grow their number. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for ourselves. Lead us to worship one more time. Give thanks for one more thing. Connect with one group and serve generously. Lord, in your mercy. 
And now we lift up those who have asked for prayer. Lord, we rejoice in Sydney and Jesse Consimo in the birth of their baby girl, Abigail, yesterday. This is the granddaughter of Bart and Lenise Graves. We pray for George Lawson for healing, Fuchsia Reed and Jack Reed, Mars Blunzer, Blunzer, who is sick, and Emily Castander, who has cancer. We pray for Phil Ricks, who is on a ventilator, Sharon Kenny, Robin Weiss, Carol Wigington, Rob Bradley, John and Darlene Berg. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we also lift up those with long-term illnesses, Shirley Steidel, Judy Catalan, Grant Meadows, Josephine Aberthal, Lee Leopard, Jell Overson, Robin Scheel, Lynn Spates, Susie Han Han Hanlon, Betty Steubing, Jack Spear, and Henry Broon. And we also lift up the Markle family as they mourn the death of Reagan Markle. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting not in ourselves, but in your great mercy toward us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And please be seated as at this time we gather the offering and the choir sings with Linda Miller accompanying on violin.
Thank you. And if you would please stand as you are able. Merciful Father, we offer you the joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who already has done for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We come now to the celebration of Holy Communion. And as Lutheran Christians, we believe and teach and practice that communion is what our Lord and Savior tells us it is, that it is his body and his blood given to us in, with, and under the bread and the wine, given to us freely for the forgiveness of our sin and for the gift of eternal life. And therefore, all who have been baptized into Jesus, all who believe in Jesus, are welcome to come forward and to receive him in his holy supper. Communion today is by intinction. Please take the wafer and dip it into the wine we have gluten-free wafers available at each station, and the acolyte here in the center will be holding grape juice in the ceramic cup. The liturgy is printed above us. Let us begin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, sharing our life he lived among us to reveal your glory and love, that our darkness should give way to his own brilliant light. And so, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. He blessed it. He gave it for them all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. O Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And please be seated. The ushers will direct you forward. And at this time, I invite forward our communion assisting team.
And if you would please stand as you are willing and able for our post-communion prayer and blessing. And now the body and the blood of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto life everlasting. Amen. Almighty God, you gave your Son both as a sacrifice for sin and a model of the godly life. Enable us to receive him always with thanksgiving and to you. And receive now the blessing and the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our closing hymn is on the screen, Here I Am, Lord.
Go in peace, serve the Lord. Praise.